Today I am going to discuss an interesting model that was given by Kausik Basu and the model is about child labor. In this particular model, Kausik Basu has used child labor as a problem of multiple equilibria. So before we jump to the model, just understand a couple of assumptions which make very important role in this model. So first assumption is about uh, this is also known as uh, luxury assumption. So you can write it here luxury axiom. So what does it mean? It says that a household with sufficiently high income would not send its children to work. It means the parents are altruistic. They are not interested in sending their kids to work. They will do this only if they are forced to manage household expenditure because their income is low. So this is very important assumption, luxury axiom. Uh, the second thing uh, is also very important. It says that adult labor is a substitute for child labor. So basic premise is that adults can do what a child can do. Uh, it means I can replace a child with adult, fine. But is it uh, other way also? Uh, the child is not exactly as productive as an adult. So what we have done here, we are saying that if a child is gamma times as productive as an adult worker, and this gamma is between 0 to 1. So it is definitely greater than 0 because otherwise uh, nobody will hire any child labor. And this is definitely less than 1 because if it is exactly 1, they will, they will hire only child. So what is the implication of this particular uh, thing, gamma thing? So see, suppose that we have total X number of children in the economy. So the total effective adult equivalence of child labor supply is gamma times x. So this is total effective child labor supply by the child. So uh, now we look at this particular model where we are trying to understand child labor as a bad equilibrium. So now see here on the L we have our labor supply on this y-axis I have adults wage so w a is adults wage so what is now there so all the supply of ed workers are labor actually by adult is only this much So this from OA to OA dash, this is the labor supply by adults. While if I include all the kids also for work, then that adult equivalence labor supply given by uh, this gamma times X children equivalent adult labor adult equivalent labor supply is this much so at a time the maximum labor that can be supplied in the economy is this much so if i am using all the adults only in the work no child is in work then practically my labor supply curve is a vertical line this a a dash so see this line is my labor supply curve when only adults are working when i am putting all the kids also in work then my labor supply curve is like this again a vertical one because beyond this there is no possibility of supplying any worker what is very interesting is in between thing my hybrid labor supply curve this a e1 E2 and T dash this is hybrid 
लेबर सप्लाई कर वाई दिस इज हाइब्रिड वाई वी आर यूजिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर वर्ड फॉर दिस लेबर सप्लाई कर विच इज लाइक दिस बिकॉज इट हैज टू डिस्टिंक्ट फीचर्स विच आर नॉट अवेलेबल इन नॉर्मल सप्लाई कर सो सी फर्स्ट ऑफ द फीचर्स इज दैट वी कैन ईजली सी ऑल्सो दैट दिस इज बैकवर्ड बेंडिंग so i hope that you know the idea of backward bending labor supply curve so backward bending labor supply curve is something like uh labor supply goes like this and then moves back uh, so this happens when my income effect of increase in wages over powers the substitution effect of increase in wage so that thing we can see here that as wages increase uh the labor supply decreases actually along this way now uh second thing is this that between e1 and e2 the composition composition of labor supply changes how that happens so that we can see so try to understand suppose that we are at equilibrium e2 and then at this equilibrium all the adults as well as child are working now if the wage increases from we2 to wl and beyond you see that people are slowly keeping taking their kids out of the work so every one by one different households are taking out their kids from work and this keeps on moving along this like this there is a high wage wh beyond which no household is sending any kid into work all the kids are in school so uh, we now see that there is a range of wage wh highest and wl lowest between which the labor supply is changing uh, because the number of adults is fixed but the number of kids is increasing this way and decreasing this way so that's why we are calling this a hybrid labor supply curve now what else happens in this hybrid labor uh, in this model so you see that this straight line dl this is the demand for labor now given is s shaped a labor supply curve and a linear demand curve for labor we are having multiple equilibria so one equilibrium is happening at e1 another is at e2 both these equilibria are stable there is another equilibrium here also but then that is an unstable one so i am not concerned about that so we will not talk about that equilibrium now let's look at equilibrium uh, e2 first so what is happening at this all the kids are uh, all the kids are working all the adult are working so we are calling this a bad equilibria uh, why bad equilibria because kids whom should they uh, whom should have been in schools they are actually working uh, what about the equilibrium e1 at this equilibrium wages are sufficiently high so only adults are working and all the kids are in school so we call this a good equilibrium okay so i hope that by this point these things are clear to you that why e1 is a good equilibrium why e2 is a bad equilibrium why we are calling uh, this labor supply curve e a e1 e2 t dash a hybrid labor supply curve and so on so now let's look at uh, 
can we compare these equilibriums E1 and E2? Uh, by this time, you should have noticed that both these equilibrium E1 and E2 both are Pareto optimal. So we cannot directly compare that whether E1 Pareto dominates E2 or E2 Pareto dominates E1. So let us look, uh, try to do something. What we are doing, we are actually using a construction. I am making a new equilibrium E dash that is at the same wage at which E1 was there. So the wage are actually same. So now we are going to compare these equilibriums and indirectly I will reach, I will compare E1 and E2. So see how I am doing this. So first between uh, E dash and E2. So these two equilibrium have two things in common. I am talking about E dash and E2. So what are the common things here? Uh, at both these equilibrium, all the kids and adults are working. But interesting is this that at E dash, the wage is much higher than it was at E2. So at E1, uh, E dash, household's income is more. So what I am going to say is that uh, uh, household's income at E dash is more than household's income at E2. Uh, reason since uh, W E1 is greater than W E2 and we know that everyone is working. So you see that uh, both these uh, E dash and E2 they are bad equilibria because we are sending our kids not to school but to work but then between E dash and E2 we can safely say that uh, implies that E dash is preferred over E2 okay so we got this. Now let us compare equilibrium E1 and E dash. So between E1 and E dash, what is happening? So see, uh, at E1 only adults are working. At E dash, adults plus child are working. Uh, wages are same between these two equilibrium. But then, uh, of course, income of the household is more at E dash because kids are also working along with the adults. So we know that household income at E dash is greater than household income at E1 since uh, labor supply is more. is more but we need to remember our luxury axiom so we know that but e1 is revealed to be preferred over e dash we will say that e1 is revealed to be preferred over e dash reason luxury axiom because w e1 is the wage at which the luxury axiom gets activated no household wants to send their kids to uh, work anymore so this was in relation to now by 1 and 2 we know that by 1 and 2 we can simply use the idea of transitivity 
uh, now we can safely say that e1 is preferred over e2 so see i what i did i first compared e2 with e1 e dash and i showed that e dash is preferred because the total household income is more at e dash and though both are bad equilibrium then i compared between e dash and e1 and i showed that though household income is more at e dash wages are same for both these both these equilibrium e1 is preferred because of the luxury axiom then we simply use the idea of transitivity so we need to write here transitivity axiom so transitivity is nothing but very simple that if a is greater than b and b is greater than c implies that a is greater than c so that is what i did here so see i am showing you that the households actually prefer equilibrium e1 so they reveal it pre to be preferred because of the luxury axiom now let us uh, see that what can we do about the problem of the child labor so i just showed you that households uh, they use child labor only as a compulsion when they don't have sufficient income so now what is the solution what is the way out so kausik basu uh, and van say that use a benign intervention now what is a benign intervention so this is an intervention that is once it is made and the economy reaches the desired equilibrium and you remove the uh, intervention nobody will go back to bad equilibrium so this is a benign intervention so what is the benign intervention here suppose that when the economy was at e2 so, so this is the economy this is the labor this is the wage of adult so this is this was t dash and this is a dash a, a dash t t dash we are having a labor demand curve like this and our labor coming like this okay so this was my equilibrium e2 and this was e1 so if government bans child labor when the economy is at e2 then what will happen uh, all this labor supply that was available before to the farms now this will vanish so they will be forced to move back to this equilibrium e1 and this is something like this is happening here this is the demand for labor this was the supply of labor okay uh, at initially and now when the government banned so the new supply is actually like this s1l so this is lower so what is going to happen the prices that is the wage of the labor is going to increase and that is what is going to happen here also the wages are going to increase and we know that once we are here nobody is going to send their kids back to work because of the luxury axiom so economy will never go back to e2 this is this will stay at e1 that was the good equilibrium so that is why it is called a benign intervention so i hope that you got all this idea so uh, if you have any questions feel free to ask me uh, and then thank you for watching